Hi, the Mud Broker here. Today I'm going to make many little pies and I'm going to do that by using my cast iron cornbread skillet. Before I can do that, I got to make some crust. And before I make the crust, I want to thank my channel members The Needy Homesteader, Brian's Aquatics, Grampy Lobster, Comfort Doll, Killer Miller, Concrete Sailors, and by the way, Concrete Sailors, you still haven't got a hold of me with a shipping address. You want a number 8 Wagner unmarked skillet in our last drawing on the uh, Facebook page. So get a hold of me somehow. S. Wheatley 27, Ron Thompson, Loretta Comer, Billy Lee Lawhon, Clone Ranger, and Dennis Fott. I greatly appreciate your support and joining my channel, and in your honor today, I will be drinking some ouzo. Here's to you. Mmm, that's good. Now, pie crust. A lot of people have problems with pie crust. No matter what they do, it turns out to have the taste and texture of a half-dried sheet of Elmer's glue. Make a lot of demands of your pie crust. You want it to be light and flaky, but you still want it to hold together good. And if you want to get back into your pie crust good graces, the best way to do that is buying a drink. Pie crust loves cheap vodka. There's a good reason for that. You want to use as little liquid as possible in your pie crust, but still have something that you can shape and form. Now, adding water to flour activates the gluten. That's what holds it together, but if you activate it too much, your pie crust gets to be tough and, like I said, kind of like a half-dried sheet of Elmer's glue. Using vodka for part of your liquid gets you around that. It allows you to use enough liquid to make it easy to handle, but the alcohol in the vodka doesn't activate the gluten. So you can actually use enough liquid to make it easy to handle without making it tough and rubbery. So, this is a recipe that I more or less stole apart from the vodka part from the Needy Homesteader. And it's a double batch because if you were to use pre-rolled pie crust for this, you would need three crusts. And they come in packs of two, so you would need two packages of two, so you'd have three crusts. This is a recipe for four nine-inch pie crusts. I have four cups of flour and about a teaspoon of salt. And I've had this in the freezer for a while, so it's nice and cold. I also have two-thirds cup each of butter and two-thirds cup of lard. Now, a lot of people will freeze this first and grate it into their flour with a cheese grater, but I've never had a lot of luck doing that. This is pretty cold. It's been in the fridge. I'm going to chunk it up a little bit, dump that in, and then I'm going to use a pastry cutter to get it all chopped up small and cut into the flour. Get in there, you. The big thing is you want to keep everything cold. You want to have little bits of lard and butter in your crust, but you don't want them to actually mix in. You just want them to kind of float around nice and solid. So you start off with all your ingredients, ice cold. I've got water that's just about frozen, and that vodka has been in the fridge, or the freezer rather, the whole time. So, everything's as cold as you could want it to be. Did I mention that's four cups of flour? Yeah, that's all-purpose flour too. You don't want to use bread flour because it has a lot higher gluten content in it, and that'll make things tough again. Got that broke up good. Set my plate aside. Where'd my cutter go? This is a pastry cutter. And you just get in there and you chop up all of your flour and your butter and your lard together.
All right, everything is cut into nice little bits there. So what I'm going to do is make a little well in the middle. Kind of get all this back into the middle of my bowl. Make a little well, and this should take around a cup of liquid, give or take. And I'm going to start off by using a half cup of my extremely cold vodka. Once you add the liquid to your pie crust, you want to handle it as little as possible. Just enough to mix it and bring it into a ball. Because the more you work the dough over, the more it will activate the gluten. And we're trying to avoid that as much as possible. So get in there, start mixing it by hand. And that's going to need more liquid. So you start adding your water. Add about a quarter of a cup. Get that mixed in. And then after that, just add in oh, you know, a tablespoon or two at a time. You don't want to get it too wet. I know I said you want to work this as little as possible, but you do have to work it enough to get it mixed together good and to bring it into a ball. It's getting close. It's starting to stick together, but I'm going to need a little bit more water. couple of drops more I think. And I ended up using less than a half a cup of water with that so yeah that's just about right. Now that it's together into a ball I'm going to cover this up and let it rest in the fridge for another 15-20 minutes. You want to keep the butter and the lard as cold as you can so that they stay in little chunks and they don't actually mix in to your dough. Yeah, that's just fine. Like I said, I'm going to cover this up, let it chill again for a little while, and we'll be back and start rolling it out. This has been resting and chilling for about 15 minutes now. I'm going to start rolling it out, but we're not going to roll it all the way out in one step. What I'm going to do is cut this more or less into quarters. I'm going to work on one ball at a time. Sprinkle a little flour on your countertop or your board. Get a little bit of flour on your rolling pin. I'm going to roll flatten this out. I'm going to start rolling it, but I'm not going to roll it all the way out. And I don't know if you can see that on camera. You can see there's little bits and chunks of butter and lard in there, and that's what you really want to see at this point. I'm going to just kind of gently roll it out until it's kind of flattened. And then I'm going to put this back in the bowl, pick it up carefully. I'm going to put this back in my bowl, put a sheet of plastic over it, 
just for a separator. And I'm going to do this with all four of my pieces of dole. I'll be back and show you that in just a second. I have three of my pieces of dole rolled out and separated. And now I'll throw my last one in and cover that with a little bit of plastic wrap over the whole thing. The reason why I only roll it out part way at first and then put it back in the fridge is it allows the butter and lard to chill again and get a little more solid and it gives the dough time to relax and rest. If you rest your dough it rolls out a lot easier. Uh, you, you'll notice it especially with something like a bread dough if you're trying to roll it out. If you roll it out it wants to try and spring back. That's because the gluten gets stretchy and rubbery. If you roll it out part way, let it sit for 15 minutes or so in the refrigerator, the gluten will relax, it'll hold this shape, and you're starting off with a bigger piece than what you were before, and uh, once it relaxes it rolls out a lot easier, and it'll keep this nice and cold. I'll let this sit and rest in the fridge for 15 minutes, then I'll come back, roll it out again, and we'll start lining the, the uh, cornbread skillet with pie crust. I'm going to work on my pieces of crust one at a time while the rest stay in the fridge. Get a little flour down. And I've also lightly brushed my cornbread skillet with a little bit of melted butter. So, I'm going to roll this out. that's going to give me a little problem so I'll just kind of pull this up and over where it's splitting tuck it back down any other spots like that I'll do the same just wants to be a pain so I'll just put him right back up on top along with that guy and that guy and I'll roll the whole thing in and it wants to stick to my rolling pin. I never said this is going to be real easy but it isn't that difficult. Anyway what I'm going to do now is cut this into fourths And I'm going to line my cornbread skillet. It can be a little tough to get them tucked up into that corner, but if it doesn't go in there perfectly, don't worry about it too much. And just bring that down the side. And that could have been a little bit longer over the edge, but I think I'll be okay. this here stuck a little bit to my counter. But I will just keep going around filling in my little compartments here. Try and leave them up the side a little bit if you can. And when I get these four in I'll roll out the next piece of dough and do the rest of them. If you have any little spots like this one here where it missed, you can just take a little piece of dough and patch that in. And I need a little patch up here. I probably should have rolled that out just a little bit bigger, but I'll do better on my next one.
You want to leave these edges high enough that you can pinch them over the top of the dividers in your cornbread skillet, but not so high that they're too hugely big. So now I go through, pinch everything over, trim the little bits off the top edges here, and we're going to fill in any little spots that didn't quite come out perfect. And we'll fill in the top of the center of the pan. Get these all pinched shut. Make sure everything's tucked in good. I'm a little bit short on this side. It should have been hanging over the edge some. That'll make it easier to uh, put the top crust on. But I can live with it. I'm out of practice at making pies really. It's been quite a while. So hopefully you'll bear with me and hopefully you'll have a little better result than what I do. Anyway, now we're ready to start filling this. I'm going to shamelessly cheat on the filling and use canned filling, but it allows me to do something else that's kind of cool, is you can make several different kinds of pie all in one batch. I've got some blueberry, we'll get him filled up. I have cherry, I have apple, and I have peach. You want to get these filled in till it's not quite to the top, that might have a little bit too much in it. You want to leave about three-eighths of an inch down for extra room. And I'm going to go around and fill these guys in. I'm going to set this aside, grab one more piece of crust for my top crust, and hopefully I'll be able to get that one right. Yeah, I clean off my rolling pin. It's got a little bit of uh, butter on it, so I'll wipe that off quick. Get him flour down again. And we'll start rolling out my top crust. And that worked out just fine. Now, if I had enough along the edge in a couple of spots, I would just go through and pinch and roll the outside edge of the crust and trim a little bit of this off. And this is going to be kind of an ugly, ugly crust, but it's going to be tasty. I just know it will. And I also want to press down gently on where those dividers are a little bit just to kind of seal them edges. And this is just about ready to go in the oven. A couple little things to do first. I forgot to preheat my oven so I'll have to pause a bit when I do that. But you want your oven at 375. We're getting into the home stretch now. The pie is just about ready to go in the oven. I'm going to brush it with a little egg wash. An egg wash is just one egg beaten with a teaspoon or so of water. I'm going to brush that on, give it a nice coat of that. Like I said, that is kind of an ugly edge on my pie crust, but I'm out of practice. 
I'll go with that for an excuse. Now that I got her all egg wash good, I'm going to sprinkle it with a little decorating sugar, which is just a coarse, coarse grain sugar. Sprinkle that with a nice coarse sugar. This they call this Swedish pearl sugar, and uh, I've only ever been able to find it once because they discontinued it. And then I'm going to cut some little slits in each of the little compartments and kind of push them open a bit. You gotta put your little slits in there so that the steam can escape and it doesn't blow the top off of your pie. Alright, the pie is ready to go in the oven, but we're not quite done yet. Now, I have all these little dough scraps here, and I have a whole other piece of dough in the fridge. So what I'm going to do is make some pie dough cookies out of them. Whenever you have extra dough, all you need to do is roll it out. cookie sheet. You just roll out your extra doll, cut it into strips, and put them on a cookie sheet. And I'll put these in the oven on the rack below the pie itself, and they only take about 15 minutes or so to bake. And it lets you know how good of a job you did making your crust because if these turn out nice and light and flaky, your crust is probably going to do it too. Come here, you. And try and arrange them so you can get all your little excess bits and pieces on there. It doesn't have to be pretty, it doesn't have to be perfect, but hopefully you can get them all on. Put these on, sprinkle them with cinnamon and sugar, which I have somewhere handy. Give them a nice little sprinkling of cinnamon and sugar and bake these up until they're nice and golden brown and done. Like I say, it takes about 15 minutes maybe, and they'll be done long before the pie. I have my oven heated up to 375. I'm going to put the pie in for 45 minutes, and I'll put these in at the same time, and I'll pull these out when they're done. My pie crust cookies baked for 20 minutes, and you can see they browned up nice on the bottom. What makes a pie crust flaky and tender is the little pockets of butter and lard mixed in with the dough. You can see that rolls up a little bit and you can see some layering in there. The pockets of butter will melt and the water will start to evaporate and it'll make these little flakes and pockets. With the vodka it keeps it, uh, like I said, it makes it easier to handle the dough and it keeps it from becoming quite so heavy and dense when you use enough liquid to make it easier to handle. The alcohol simply evaporates off in the oven, but you can see 
how nice and flaky that is. And it's really tender. So, safe bet my pie is going to turn out real nice. That still has another 20 minutes or so. I'll show you that when it comes out. There's my pie just out of the oven. Nice thing about pies is a lot of times they look better coming out of the oven than they did going in. This has got to sit and cool for a couple hours until it's completely cooled off. And we'll come back and cut a piece out of this and you'll get to see what they look like. My pie has thoroughly cooled and if I did everything right I should be able to get a nice piece without messing it up too bad. Kind of feeling along for the divider in there. And if I can pick this out without ruining it. Come on. Come on. Yeah. You should get a nice wedge of pie with a crust that goes all the way around it. Ain't that slick? I think this is a piece of blueberry and we'll see how that crust turned out. Oh yeah, that's nice and flaky. If I take that back, that's apple. Give her a taste. Yeah, the crust turned out just the way it's supposed to. It's nice and flaky. It isn't tough on the bottom. So, if you have yourself a cast iron cornbread skillet, that's something else you can do with it, is make these cool little pies with it. Something like that would be great in a lunch box. And uh, the cornbread skillets are pretty easy to find. They're real common. They've been making them for years. Pretty much everybody made them. I think Lodge still sells them, but instead of having a skillet handle, they have two loop handles on them, I think. And they're not terribly expensive. So, if you get hold of one of these, go ahead and do so. And even if you don't, buy your pie crust a drink. It'll love you for it. See you all later. Like and subscribe, join my channel if you like what I do, and I'll see you around.